by Giant FM and streaming live on the first federal Facebook page. Yes, indeed, it's Friday morning, and it's a beautiful Friday morning for December. Uh, 39 degrees, looking at a high of 51 today. It's time for the first federal program, and we've got Evan Gottschalk in the building. Good morning. Good morning. The Community Foundation sign said 42, Paul. Okay. So, well, might be some fluctuations in town. Well, yeah. I'm going to head that direction. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be closer, a warmer, closer to May. Yeah, that's right. The rain 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 yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. Beautiful day. Yesterday was gorgeous. Yes. After this, let's go for a nice stroll. Oh, wait, that's tonight. That's tonight. Yeah. 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 Nice weather for that. I, I tried my best. Minute. Tanner told me I had to make sure it was nice out tonight. For Santa? Yeah. He's yeah. popping up around town. He is. Places. He is. We're getting to that time. Past the turkey time, and uh, now yeah. we're ready for some Santa. It's pretty exciting. Well, I'm glad we haven't hit a lot of the winter stuff yet. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. Yeah, it's always the key word. <laughs> We've got a fun show today. Our guest later on is Rochester High School Athletic Director Kevin Reaney. He's a radio veteran. Yeah, he's uh, coming in here almost every week and giving us an update on uh, From the Bench. We stole him for this show. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good policy. And we're excited to talk about Rochester High School sports with Kevin. Get some updates on the winter sports. Um, I think we got some some pretty good expectations on some teams this year um, with some great student athletes. So our trivia this morning is based around Rochester sports. Paul, okay. One of your known areas of expertise. <laughs> yeah. Historical Rochester sports. How many sexual championships? Has the Rochester boys basketball team won? Okay. 25, 35, or 45. Those are all pretty big numbers. They are. They are. Maybe Kevin will give me some clues during the show today. Now, hand signals? <laughs> maybe, maybe hand signals later. Well, see, I, I listened for hand signals, or watched for hand signals last week, and it got me the wrong answer, because I knew the answer. <laughs> That's right. And, and then, you know, the guests Trust, give me so the wrong trusting. Answer. You're like a sheep with wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm not sure if that should be a compliment or a, a diss there. Jeez, no, no, Innocence is bliss, my friend. Okay, um, let's move on to sports around the country. Let's do it. Tanner? Yeah, I'm going to skip the local sports today since Kevin's our guest today. I'm going to let him kind of handle that and talk about that. So I'll talk more on sports on the national scene, maybe local college-wise here. But... Uh, I want to start off with some college basketball. Congratulations to the RHS 2008 graduate Corey Barnett, who picked up his first win as a collegiate head coach the other night. Oh, that's awesome. Nevada beat Pepperdine, and head coach Steve <clears throat> Alford's out for three games, I believe it is, with COVID. Uh, test positive for COVID, so he's out three games. So Corey, being one of the assistants, got promoted to fill in as head coach, and he got the W, and they were on a four-game losing streak. Wow. Mm -hmm. So he getting them back on track. That's on awesome. Line, so... Yeah, yeah. What a neat opportunity. Yeah, really cool. Um, and he's, uh, he's working his way up. He's put he a was, lot of time in. He was with Steve at UCLA, mostly as a video coordinator, and mm -hmm. now he's an assistant at Nevada. So That's fantastic. Yeah, it's really cool to see uh, Rochester graduates do, do uh, accomplish great things. So. you got to stay up kind of late to track those games. Right? Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Those are late starts. Uh, the Mountain West Conference. So, yep. Yep. Uh, also, college basketball, both uh, Indiana and Purdue are off to pretty good starts. Uh, Purdue's undefeated, 7-0, ranked number two in the country. Uh, big game tonight at home against Iowa. It's a 9 o'clock start. It's one of those late Big Ten Network games. Uh, if you like offense, you probably want to watch this game. These two are the two leading offenses in the country, That's neat. Iowa and Purdue. Wow, that'll be a good one. Tonight. Yeah, should be a good one, and if, if Purdue happens to win, They'll be ranked number one in the country next week for the first time in school history. Wow. They've never been ranked number one. They've been ranked number two, but not number one, which is kind of hard to believe because they've had some pretty good teams throughout the history they of the program. I was thinking of John Wooden's days. Yep. He's back there. And then uh, the three amigos with Troy Lewis, Everett Stevens, and uh, Todd Mitchell, they got up to number two in 1988. Okay. That was the last time they were number two until this latest poll that came out. So a lot of pressure right now. There is some pressure. <laughs> <laughs> you have to lock in tonight and play well. It's, I'm sure Mackie Arena's 
It's gonna be pretty quiet. Tonight. Oh my gosh, can you imagine? It's gonna be pretty loud, I think. So, and then Indiana's off to a good start. Had a heartbreaking double <laughs> overtime loss to Syracuse the other night, but they fought back into it. They could have just quit at halftime. Yeah, they're they love throwing the ball away. They're kicking the ball away. <laughs> yeah, really turn, the turnovers need to come down <laughs> a little bit. But. So that game wasn't looking too good for a yeah. while, but they did they did uh, kind of buckle down a little bit, which was nice to see. Yeah. So and then they host uh, Nebraska this weekend. It's hard to leave conference plays here. And that's kind of how Big Ten does it. You get two conference games back to finishing your not conference, and then little conference taste. season yeah kicks up big time in January. It's the so. order. Section and so, and so far, the Big Ten's been kind of disappointing. I know. So far, it's early. But they did win the ACC Big Ten Challenge eight to six. So always nice to see that. Those were competitive games. A lot of them were. I I was complaining about a lot of the matches beforehand, and then the game for good. Like, <laughs> okay, maybe they know what they're doing. I, and I should just be quiet. I enjoyed so, that. I, I appreciate that series. Uh, college football. We'll find out the college football playoff and the bowl destinations for teams come Sunday. I believe the playoffs going to be announced around noon, and we'll, we'll have a pretty good idea Saturday night after all the conference championships have been, been played. So, what do you think happens with Cincinnati? I think if they win, they're in. Okay. In, in my opinion, I think if they win, they're in. Um, It'd be a big deal. Uh, Georgia, Alabama, I think Alabama has to win to get in. If they lose, I don't see a two-loss Alabama jumping a conference champion. Um, Michigan wins, they'll be in. Uh, it'll get interesting if Iowa pulls the upset, that, then that would kind of get interesting. And That'd then, be a crazy story. Then Oklahoma State, Baylor is the other one to kind of look at. If Oklahoma State wins, they got a good shot to get in. I would think of Georgia wins, Cincinnati wins, Michigan wins. And if you're a Notre Dame fan, there's still some hope, even though you got a brand new head coach now. Uh, <laughs> Brian Kelly left for LSU, and now Marcus Freeman, who's the defense coordinator, got promoted to head coach. He's a swift age of 35 years old. Yeah, he's, got, <laughs> he's a bright youngster. Yes. Yeah, yes. in the coaching world. He's worked his way up pretty quickly. and uh, he has. Now he takes the rank of one of what's looked at as one of the best jobs in the country. But Brian Kelly <laughs> thought it was good enough to go ahead and follow the money down south. So, uh, Is he just looking for that national championship? Or what? Oh, I think that's 100% what just he's doing. I, his... I think he looked at it as I'm the winningest coach in Notre Dame. I've made two playoffs and another BCS championship appearance. I honestly don't think I can get it done here. I'm going to go down south where they don't have the academic restrictions. I can get the same type of athletes, maybe even a little more high caliber down there in the SEC country. And, and and maybe there was some stuff going on behind the scenes we don't know about with the AD or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I think it took everybody kind of by surprise when that news came out earlier this week. Makes things interesting. It does. It does. Sports news. It does. Coaching yeah. carousel is always fun if your team's not involved. <laughs> your team's involved is pretty stressful. So I saw a NFL hot coaching hot list, and Vic Fangio was on there for the Broncos. Yeah, I, I, if they don't make the playoffs, I think he'll get fired. Is this his third or fourth? Third year. year. Okay. But but they're they're playing better, and they have the fun task of going to Arrowhead. Sunday night on national television yeah. this week. And Notice you said playing better really softly. Yeah, because <laughs> it's week to week with the Denver Broncos. It's just kind of maddening at this point. But uh, Speaking of the NFL, the Colts traveled to Houston this week. Uh, Colts are six-point favorites as they have a 6-6 six and six record. Texans have a 2-9 and nine record. That game's at 1 o'clock. You can, of course, listen to it right here on WROI. Yeah, pregame will kick off at noon. And the Chicago Bears uh, host the Arizona Cardinals. Cardinals are eight point favorites with a nine and two record. That game's at one o'clock on Fox. So Bears and Colts different, same time, different channels this week. I know they've run into that problem a few times this yes. year where same time, same channel. So yeah. not this week. So everything's good to go there. Yeah, and of course you you watch the Bears game, listen to the Colts game. That's how you do it. There you go. That's perfect. You gotta figure it out, yeah. Paul. I like that, Paul. Paul Brown's on a bye week this week. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> 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 it means we're not gonna lose this week. Exactly. <laughs> Got some tidbits here this morning on this date. 1828, Andrew Jackson was elected as the seventh president of the United States. If I would have quizzed you, who was the seventh president? Would you know that was Andrew da- Jackson? No. no. I was just going to ask if you guys knew all the presidents. I did at one time. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I did back uh, when um, Clinton was in office. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost track. <laughs> <laughs> On this day in 2020, just last year, AT&T Incorporated's Warner Brothers Studio announced all of its 2021 movies would stream online the same day they appear in theaters because of the pandemic. 
we'll see if that continues going forward in 2022. I think it seems to be a good model for them. I think people really enjoy being able to stream the new movie from home. Yeah, I think the movie theaters aren't, still aren't real happy about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure they're not. Yeah, I know um, they put uh, Venom 2 straight to movie theater and only in theaters. And within about four days, they switched it to streaming, too. Ah. I don't think they saw the numbers they were expecting, sure. and then the streaming before. just jumped it right back up. Yeah. So. Yep, it's a, it's a new way to, new habit to watch movies, I it's guess. The, new, the new next area of our lives with technology is kind of changing things. Mm-hmm. Sure is. See where that settles out. And today is National Bartender Day, Make a Gift Day, Disability Day, Fake Fur Friday, <laughs> <laughs> Not day Friday, National <clears throat> Roof Over Your Head Day. What a blessing! Yes, <laughs> absolutely, yes. the ultimate blessing. <laughs> Thank you, Tanner. You're welcome. Okay. Also, we mentioned earlier we got some local uh, holiday events now starting to pop up. Yeah. The miracle trees are up around the county. The Rochester trees at Shepherd's again. Uh, Akron trees at Akron Carnegie Public Library and Mintones is at the Bell Memorial Public Library there in Mintone. So lots of good opportunity to uh, buy gifts for other people. Yeah, absolutely. Go grab something, help support a local family who uh, is struggling a little bit. Yeah, it's fun to do that. Also, Rochester Downtown Partnerships putting on the holiday stroll that we were just talking about. Parade tonight. I think Santa rides into town. Yes, he does. Um, 5.45? Yep, I'm told you need to be here by 5.45. Okay. That's all I know. Okay. (laughs) I'll expect to see you then. Uh, yeah, I'll probably be in here making sure that Christmas music is playing through now. Oh, hey, that'll be great. Those new speakers are working well. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Get the courthouse trees lit up. Santa then will we'll then uh, head into his little home and be awaiting kids, 6 to 8 tonight. Um, also, there's local businesses around downtown that are having some special things, hot chocolate, treats, other things. Um, I think there's some pictures maybe that you can get taken um, also inside, so love to see everybody. Also, uh, breakfast with Santa's tomorrow. He's sticking around overnight. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to take part in the uh, Small Business Saturday bingo card. Hey, that's great. Dreddy's, they're actually having that Dreddy's from 9 to 11. Tickets are $7 for kids, 12 for adults. Um, you can reserve tickets, which probably sounds like a smart idea. I would guess so. Five seven four three two eight seven zero six zero to reserve those, and then <clears throat> after a, a short hiatus to another community, Santa's coming back, and he'll be at the public library on Monday, December sixteenth, and kids can visit him there from four thirty to six thirty. Um, the Sayotes are sponsoring a free showing of holiday music again this year, and the South Bend Symphony String Quartet is going to be performing. Ooh. That's Thursday, December sixteenth at Faith Outreach Center this year at 7 o'clock. That'll be a great show. And we're talking about money news a little bit. Who yeah. can predict the stock market? Oh, it's been a rough week. When it, when um, Wall Street doesn't know what's happening next, things just go crazy up and down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I yes, think I that's do. called volatility. <laughs> <laughs> I never grasped that in school, but now I think no, we're seeing it. <laughs> So we finished uh, the week so far um, down over 600 points, even though it was up right. yesterday, that, about, about that amount. That's 1.8% down. We'll see what happens today. The good news has been um, the jobless claims numbers that were so high for a while actually are really pretty low. Yes. The last couple of readings. So that, they had that reading yesterday, and that kind of helped out the market. We probably, who knows for sure. So we'll keep an eye on that, but uh, where else are you going to put your money? That's a, <laughs> that's a good place for money you don't need for a long time. It yeah. still can grow really well. So talk with a financial advisor about that. Probably need a good plan. I wouldn't recommend just uh, going about it on your own unless yeah. you uh, kind of have some experience. <laughs> no, no, I have no experience. So you might talk to Mark Bluebar or Brian Bell at First Federal. We could help you out with that. Yeah, it'd be the perfect place to go. Okay, and then yesterday on CNBC, the Kroger CEO said they're on pace for their best yearly performance since 2014. Turns out the stay-at-home stuff, the last 18 months, people learned how to cook again. 
<laughs> That's what he yeah. said, literally. There's <laughs> another groceries are still flying off the shelves. Yeah, it's Herbs, hard to get stuff at Kroger sometimes. Fruits and vegetables, meat, yeah. all the good stuff. So, you doing any roasts this weekend or anything? No. Okay. Not yet. I mean, something to shoot for. I, I mean, it could change between now and tonight because I don't even know what we're doing tonight. So, <laughs> I like that. you know. Uh, also, this is kind of um, something we've grown to count on over the years. Ford's F Series pickup truck is going to remain projected to remain the best selling vehicle for the 40th year in a row. Wow. Good. Can you believe that? Right. They're doing something right. Obviously. <laughs> So uh, we want to welcome you to First Federal today. If you want to come see us, we're open until five on Fridays, and we're also open until noon on Saturdays. Come on in, and we can help you out with anything that you've got going on. We'd love to teach you about our mobile and online products. Um, really makes managing your money really simple, and you can take care of that even when we're not open. Yeah. So we love talking about that, of course. But we we'd love to help you out at the teller line or. Um, the mortgage office rates are still historically low. I was talking to some experienced bankers the other day, and I think mortgage rates probably averaged over the last 40 years like 6% or something like that. Well, that seems like an outrageous rate today. Well, that's because they're still in the 3% or lower, depending on how long you want your mortgage loan. So if you're thinking of buying, we even have a purchase special going on. Yes. And that means, hey, you're buying a house and we'll give you some extra dollars off of our normal closing costs that we need to charge. So check us out for that. I think we can go uh, upwards of $700 off here through the end of the year. So great place to look. We are well known for helping people with that largest transaction, financial transaction of their life. We really enjoy helping you. We have tons of experience. We can make that very smooth for you. So. Talk to us about that. Ben Dalton or Stacy Wilson can help you with that. 223-2128. Also, everybody needs to buy homeowner's insurance every year. Yeah. Don't you? So we'd love to give you a free quote on that and help you look at that and see if you um, have the right coverage amounts to make sure if something happened, um, you'd be well covered. And also, you can shop that around to different insurance companies um, through our agency, First Federal Insurance Services. So. We recommend calling. You can get the most accurate quote that way by giving some additional information. 833-331-0020. Um, and you can find that information on our website at firstfederalbanking.com as well. In my notes, I see it says firstfederalbaking.com. Now, although we were talking about Kroger and all that, I wouldn't recommend going to that site. It might be, it might be from the Ukraine or Romania or something like that. Not recommended. Maybe it's all Tanner's recipes. Love <laughs> 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 we'll to highlight that on a different show. The baking special would be would be very yes. long. Christmas Eve, maybe that's what we'll do. Christmas yeah, Eve, be, you know, here's the baking special. Here's this one recipe. We're done. Bye. <laughs> Got the ideas working now. We are the only locally owned bank in Fulton County. We're very proud of that. We don't want to be the biggest bank, just the best. So please try us out. We'd love to help you. Borrowers must meet underwriting guidelines on those mortgage loans where FDIC insured for your deposits and an equal housing lender. Our NMLS number is 399927. And that makes us legal. Thank you. You're welcome. I like so little bits to help out. I know. It's <laughs> so fun. Well, we're excited to, rec to uh, welcome Kevin Rini to the show. Probably at his usual spot here at the counter, or am I at it right now? You're at it. Oh, you're at it. Oh, well, wherever you're at. It, it is my show, so <laughs> it is your show. thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Kevin, you're the uh, athletic director now at Rochester High School. We all know that pretty well, but it hasn't really been all that long yet, has it? No, it's just been a minute. <laughs> it, uh, it's been a quick minute. It uh, it started fast and it, and it has slowed down a little bit, but um, the support staff and the community have made it a, a really really fun transition from uh, teaching fourth grade. So yeah, it, it's a it's a lot of fun to be uh, working here full time in the community. And we really enjoy having you. It's exciting. Um, still feeling excited about that. Tell us a little bit about those first few weeks and kind of getting your feet under you with fall sports, and, and then we want to be talking a little bit of winter sports here too. 
Well, at the beginning, um, well, I was an athletic director 25 years ago, and that's not an exaggeration. That's the truth. That's the actual that's years? The, wow. The numbers. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Down at McConaughey, and um, was new to the Rochester area. So this, this wasn't an entirely new uh, gig. I said it was kind of like riding a bike. Just Good. trying to get on the bike as it was moving, which <laughs> <laughs> is a wobbly proposition if you've ever, if you've ever attempted that. But um, the the uh, the staff with Oscar Haas and Lori Atkinson as the principal, assistant principal of the high school, and then Greg Martz, and of course Superintendent Janet Vance. It's um, 100. percent What do you need? We'll take. You know, we'll do whatever. You know, you need us to do um, the community. All I've heard is, tell us what you need. Um, we got your back. And, you know, coming into it, uh, I knew a lot of the um, fall coaches um, outside of coaching and outside nice. of sports. And so, yeah, there was a little bit of a personal relationship um, there. Um, they knew me as a person instead of, you know, as an athletic director, I guess. And um, Right. So... You know, kind That's of a great on head them. start. Yeah, it was a great. It was a great start. Um, like Coach Schaefer, uh, brand new football coach. Yeah, he was on staff at McConaughey when I was down there. So really, I, know, I didn't know that. I've known Coach Schaefer for a long time, and so he he has seen me in this role, and um, he knew what to expect, and and knew what he was going to get. That's and right. Of course, I've coached. You know, I coached uh, Coach Guard's uh, daughter Maddie, and, and you know. I'm, you just when you when you have those personal connections outside of um, the school, it makes things it makes things a little bit smoother, a little bit easier. And you know, being an AD at 27 years old, you know everything. <laughs> <laughs> and all of the most of the coaches were older than you, but now at 52, um, I don't know anything. I think I feel like I listen a little bit better, and I'm older than. That's a lot neat. of the coaches, so it's very different. Yes, um, I don't know if I'm better at it or not, but it's um, I, that's I, great perspective. I, I think it thinks, and the the kids are still the kids, and that's what that's the whole driving point for me um, was when I went down and taught fourth grade. Is every day getting to see the kids, being around the kids. It's a different environment. Of course, these are bigger kids, but um, you know, you watch them work um, after school. You watch them how they function during the day with each other and what kind of kid they are and, and have little side conversations with them um, that aren't always, you know, hey, you had a good game last night, but just, you know, how are things going? Yeah, you know, real okay. life. Yeah, and try and, you know, touch base with, with them like that because, you know, in the end, they, just, they want this high school experience to be, uh, you know, get the most out of it they can. And if we haven't learned anything, and we've talked about this before, that if you, if you can't look at it like, this, yeah, I might not get to play tomorrow. Yeah. And if, you, if you don't look at it like that and you can't take that approach, you haven't been paying attention. Yeah, and you think about what creates value, it's scarcity. Yes. Like, or the threat of scarcity. Like, yeah. God, these games may not be here. Let's, yeah. let's really right. take you, this. You know, there's, there's no, well, I'll get to it tomorrow. Yeah. Then you might, maybe not. Some and so. Motivation. Yeah, I think, yeah, and it's, a, and the coaches have embraced that a little bit. Um, grateful for every day that we get to be together with the kids and the coaches and get to see each other that's oscar's uh number one goal just how do we keep the kids in the building every day and we'll do you know when the board and um dr rayburn and and jana they offer these ideas and things like that to whatever we gotta do whatever we have to do to keep kids in the building um because that's why you know that's why we're there and that's, that's what makes it fun. Well, I think you've touched on it, and this is so critical for sports, is this environment we've been living in is has created, if you've got committed teams, um, it just has enhanced the, the communication and the things that you can do. It, it should. The opportunity for teamwork. Right, it should. And, you know, you'll have just a couple kids that will drive that bus for you on your teams and get them to um, understand and realize that, you know what we're doing here today. Um, it, it's, yeah, we might not see each other for two weeks. You know, this, you know that QT. Word <laughs> up, and we don't even talk about it anymore. But you know, it's still a thing, and, yeah. and you, you have you have those. Um, I mean, you, you, it's not a it's not a you know, live or death, a life or death situation every day. But but it is it, it matters. 
it kind of puts an emphasis, underlines it, highlights it, however you want to say it, that today is important. Has value. Ha, has all the value. Yep. Well, let's think about winter sports coming up. We've got uh, really some great starts to some seasons here so far. Um, let's just kind of go through that and give us a little bit of uh, your inside take on, on some of these teams or what we're looking at for, for our winter sports here in the high school. The, uh, okay, we, list, we can just start with you know, our swimmers. Yeah, our, let's do um, they're, they're at it in the pool. We had a, we had a full natatorium on uh, Tuesday night. When Lewis Cass came, and it was so great. So I'm not taking that for granted, are we? Yeah, no. And, <laughs> and, and last year they swam in front of nobody, so um, uh, it was it was great to see. It. Of course, it's hot in there, it's warm in there, but that's that's Part the auditorium. Yeah, and so it was um, it was really great to see a lot of a lot of uh, faces uh, on the other side of the pool from where I've been the last ten years. But uh, Coach Brown and Coach Steininger and Coach Abbott have and um, Coach Wynn and. Uh, Coach Bartz have the swimmers and divers really they're working hard they're as always they're a great group of kids they you know every meet they get better and um, improve upon things and um, it's a it's a terrific group to represent the community I mean those kids are first class kids all the way through and have been in that program for a long time it's something that the um, that when they go on the road and they represent Rochester we all feel pretty good about that that's awesome now, that is that something we can we could head out and watch one of those events if we wanted to right now. Uh, yeah, uh, we don't have any restrictions at all right. for, for any of the um, COVID thing. I and mean, just, you know, if you're not vaccinated, probably should wear a mask. But, and you know, you're, we're, we're uh, per Dr. Raber, you know, it, it, people are exercising their personal choice. So Swimming events are pretty exciting. If you haven't tried one of those, you ought to go check it out. Yeah, they're, uh, I mean, you, you go with somebody who may know a little bit, but... I think the the main thing to appreciate is the the camaraderie that the kids have. There, are, you know, very few of them are off in their own world. They're usually paying attention to what the other kids are cheering doing, each other on, and cheering. And, That's right. And there's a lot of there's a lot because they know they work because they're in the weight room with Dr. Feldman at six a.m. and they they um, they know they all work really hard and it's really fun, you know, to to let your teammate know that you appreciate their effort. That's great. All right, transitioning to wrestling. Got a big squad this year, looks like. He's, Coach Garrett's got a huge squad. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> I, he does, he, they can't even be in the wrestling room. They have to I wondered the, about that. The auxiliary gym, it's, it's huge. And um, it's great, he's got 45 kids. Wow. Um, he's got six Damn. girls that wrestle on a regular basis. And they are in there, and they're, they get after it every day. And um, about 5 o'clock, 5.15, you'll see him kind of slide out of the auxiliary gym and they all are whipped. <laughs> they, they, they work really He's got a great staff of volunteer coaches and coaches that, that come in and know what he wants and know what his program's like and um, uh, they, uh, they they put a little bit of beat down on Wabash last night and um, he is very, Coach Carter is very excited about the prospect of what the, they're, we're ranked number six in uh, 1A, that's a, that's uh, awesome. which is just, I think, kind of the tip of the iceberg. Team strength. Because they, yeah, and they're young. Um, we don't have a lot of seniors, and they, uh, it, it is a family unit, and they'll be at home on Wednesday night with uh, Whitco and North Miami, and um, what's this going on? Um, uh, Northfield. So we'll have, um, It'll be it'll be a big deal. We want to try and get as many students as we can there for a student a nice student section. Um, where where are those held? Is that we're gonna hold we're gonna hold that on Wednesday night. We're gonna have uh, two mats going in the main gym. Oh wow, so, that's a neat environment. Coach Schaefer and the football staff will be there uh, supervising, and Coach Schaefer is on the microphone. I mean, so <laughs> he's gonna he wants to be uh, part of that, and it's kind of great. We're trying to create a little bit of a family culture. Cool. At the high school in the athletic department, yeah, and we're like pretty that. excited about it. Yeah, I think the kids kind of feel it too, when the coaches are on the same pages. That yep. man, does it make a difference? Yeah, that, and that isn't always automatic. So that's neat what you're doing there. No, it's it's not, and it can't be forced. Um, I think that the coaches feel the uh, and see the value of of what that can bring. 
with Coach Guard with his strength and conditioning classes that he has throughout the day. So he's touching a lot of the athletes and helping them. About 85%. Through all those sports, that's really great. Um, so it's, and, and they're all mixed. There isn't one, you know, class that's that's all like football guys are all, they, they're, they're mixed. You have, um, you, you got some freshmen that are just starting to figure out you know that they have muscles, <laughs> <laughs> and they're in the weight room with this, with the with the juniors and seniors that that know that they have muscles and like to use them, and and it's great that all of those kids can work together and see each other working. We're speaking with Rochester High School Athletic Director Kevin Reaney this morning about some of our winter sports and the athletic department at the high school. Uh, let's talk a little basketball now. We can uh, girls we can. basketball. Let's let's talk about girls basketball. Uh, they're on a little bit of a roll. I, but uh, I, I don't want to. I don't want to jinx them at all. But Coach Jennings has got them playing pretty well right now. Pretty hard. They're starting to shoot the ball a little bit better. Their field goal percentage towards the beginning of the year, but there's the transition from the fall with a lot of those girls played um, fall sport. But um, they're starting to shoot the ball a little bit better, so their field goal percentage is going up. But um, they have pretty good team speed, and uh, they have some size on the on the block. So. They're able to do some. They they can have a different uh, a variety of offenses and defenses. They just don't run. They're not one trick yeah. know, pony. And uh, and it's and it's kind of they're kind of fun to watch. And his JV squad, Coach Bowers' the JV squad, is uh, undefeated. Wow. Uh, they had a little bit of a scare with Culver the other night, um, but they hit the shot at the end. Hit the shots at the end when they needed to, and and uh, that's that's a good thing. There's always you know this we're they're kind of in the middle of that season where, you know, you get the excitement from the beginning and now you got a, you're in a little bit of a lull. How do you keep that rolling? And um, they seem they seem to have uh, locked in a little bit. Found a little bit of the uh, the thing that makes them go. Saturday they're going to be home with Southwood. So okay. it'll be a nice conference game. Uh, hopefully, hopefully they can get a nice win there. Seems like they like you said earlier they ma- they can match up with some. With several different types of teams, which is yeah. pretty neat to see. Yeah, they. Um, I think he's got pretty good, like his pretty good team speed um, with the guards and some of the forwards. And these girls, a lot of them are in the junior class. I mean, okay. the seniors are are um, Im- important also with Lexi Thomas and Cam Burkett. And they, and they, um, but a bulk of his um, Coach Jennings kids are in that junior class and they play together for a long, long time. It um, really and, helps, and, and and they play they play softball and they play basketball and they um, a lot of more soccer volleyball. So these girls, this is what they do. Yeah, they know they, each other. They they know each other. They they um, they're they're very competitive. And um, you know, even we lost Emma Hauschel and Maddie Heinzman with ACLs on back to back games. Um, the kids have kind of filled in that. I mean, that was a starter, and yeah. you know, your sixth girl or seventh girl, one off the bench. And uh, they've kind of filled in. Um, you don't want to say next man up by just discarding the others, but they've done a really nice job with that. That's been fun to watch. And what are we looking at for uh, boys basketball? It's kind of just getting started in some respects. It is. It's an interesting. Um, it's an interesting squad. I watched it as a as a dad last year, um, and to see, you know, with with most of those kids, um, new outside. The, the court and um, and then watch that transition on the basketball floor and how well they played and functioned together as a unit those six seniors and um, it's totally different it's a totally different squad we're going to see uh, if you've seen them on TV yet and um, or watched them in person it's not the same uh, we don't you know we don't have a lot of size we're going to have two freshmen that are going to play a lot and um, just sometimes the speed of the game gets their head spinning a little bit, but the faith is in the, the coaching staff. When you look at the experience we have with Coach Malco and Coach uh, Stasiak and Coach Reinhold and yeah. Coach Luke Smith as a volunteer assistant, Mike Malco and, and Sean Kelly with the JV. You just go down the line and you look, all those guys have been coaching for a really long time and they're really good at what they do. Well, and I think we're, you've already seen in a couple games some learning moments for this team. I think we're going to continue to see that. It'll be neat to see what they can, what I, they can come together and accomplish. I think, I, I think it's, it is interesting. Everybody's trying to figure out their roles. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's right. They were they were all very spotty role players last year, and then we had the addition of Paul Leisure from uh, Valley as a transfer. He's come in. Um, he's a really good player. He had thirty six the other night at Tri Central. Um, but it's not it's not Paul Leisure show at all. Um, it, it's going it's going to be if you're paying attention, it'll be a very interesting and fun. Uh, season to watch. I don't know if Coach Malco will think it's you know all that. It's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bumpy ride, but he's, young team. Yeah, he's yeah. got that young team, and I've watched several practices, and there are showstoppers. Just about every practice, every practice has that, and we need to take a break, and then we need to talk about some stuff, <laughs> and kind of get some ideas straightened out on what we're doing. And but the, but they're very receptive. The kids. You know, like you said, they're just trying. They're trying to figure it out. Yeah. And um, hopefully, you know, it's the we need to play for today instead of yeah, we'll just get it tomorrow because we may not be there. It's kind of fun to watch the growth happen throughout a season. That's what I'm looking forward to. It'll be. It is very. It's very fun and to see it up close and kind of in a hard knocks kind of way. <laughs> see, that, see, that, see that kind of stuff as it develops during the day. How the kids interact with each other. It's been. I've I've enjoyed. Um, all the kids interacting with all the kids outside of their uh, outside of their sports and seeing what makes them tick. Um, well, thanks so much for coming in this morning, Kevin. Kevin Rainey, your Rochester High School Athletic Director. We appreciate what you're investing in our local students and uh, inside the sports arena and out. And uh, great fit for the job. Appreciate you coming in today. Well, I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to be able to try and impact the community with the culture that we're trying to build at the at the school from the fifth grade sports all the way up to the high school and the staff is on board and it's kids first and you know winning is important but it's education based Great. student athletics and that's what we're after. We'll see if you guys can figure out this trivia question. How many sexual championships has the Rochester boys basketball team won? 25, 35, or 45? I'm gonna get I'm gonna say 25. That's honestly my guess, too. Okay. The answer is 35. First one was in 1914. You might have forgotten about that one <laughs> when you were counting. The latest one was this past year. Yeah. Okay. So, got a nice tradition there. There is a nice tradition, and we have, we have some fun things that we are working on the athletic department to kind of highlight and showcase the uh, history past success of... of uh, high school basketball at Rochester High School. Here's a trivia question you can have. How many Indiana All-Stars has Rochester High School Ooh. had? Boys and girls. So there's there's something to chew on from okay. our, li our little community, our little school. That's neat. It's a number you may not you may not realize, but uh, we're working on some things uh, to get that promoted so that anybody that comes to the gym they will know. That's awesome. Let's uh, close with these words of wisdom from Babe Ruth. Okay. Very fitting. <laughs> <laughs> Every strike brings me closer to the next home run. There you go. Those, Those are great. great. <laughs> Those are perfect. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks. We'll see you next week.